Now then, we are back with a more understanding from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the word. <coughs> this translation is from the original documents of the Hebrews of old, the prophets of Israel, giving us directives of the time of the end. And these directives gives us also many areas of understanding of the layers given also by the prophets of the Renewed Covenant. And those were then traced back from, obviously, the Torah. There is no interpretation of any prophecy outside of the instructions. Any person, any prophet, coming and explaining prophecies of the future without making a clear reference of the Torah is not a true prophet. Must have a tracing back to the instructions. It's an absolutely must. In the Torah itself, it states if any person is speaking in the name of Yahweh as the prophet, must have a reference. During the time of Israel, obviously there was a situation, the people they were living during the time of the law, but those who speaking in the name of Yahweh would have to have the understanding of it and they speak then in the name of Yahweh, and if it would not come true, the prophet was then to be ignored. And in many cases, false prophets were slaughtered. That's how severe was the law. So they understand in these days where there are so many people speaking what they don't understand. So the main clue of a person when hearing prophecies of Yahweh must have a reference with the Torah. And most precisely, a person must indicate Leviticus the 23rd chapter. So with this understanding, first, the second, and the first, then you can filter any kind of a person speaking what they don't understand. So it's very important, kingdoms and nations, when they hear people speaking genuinely, then you have to have the basis. Because sometimes you find pieces of truth, yet it's not filtered properly. So, and then these people, they are taught the very basics. And those basics, they were for many centuries. They were placed aside and given then a cop-out copy of the word. And that's why they were never able to find a solid ground to stand on. <clears throat> but as we understand, then the time of the deceit has ended. And the main reason why is because then when you read in Revelation, the section of it related with his people then ruling the earth for a thousand years meant the spiritual directives from heaven. They were proclaiming the kingdom to come government. So then for the first thousand years, he ascended. He was born as king. Up to 1009 was the time then when the camps were very evident. Mostly after the hundred of the first hundred years after his ascension was then the first camp. However, you find areas during the time of Shaul the Shaliak, you find many areas where then people, then they were transitioning themselves from the first service to the second service. Thus, when you understand then the Torah, you are speaking then of the first service. That's why only half of the Torah was completed. And then half of it is related with the spring feast. Then you understand the spring feast was 490 days, half of the Torah. The other half is the autumn feast. 490 days. So then from there, when you understand then the step-by-step -step formation ever since the time of Moses, then you begin to count the time. Time versus prophecy. The only relation you have with the time and prophecy, prophecy comes from a place where time is not counted. 
That's what we humans sometimes don't understand. We understand sometimes as facts taking place and then ruled by time. When we are speaking of a heaven, it is the contrary. Because we are born in sin and we must learn the ways of heaven. That's why Shaliak Shaul said in Romans, Then renew your mind with the scripture. But what scripture he was speaking of? He was speaking of the Torah. There was the only available scripture at his time. So then when you read the area then in Romans, renewing of your mind, then you must not have in your mind the understanding of the renewed covenant. You know, Corinthians and then Galatians, Ephesians, those did not even exist at the time. So he was speaking of the understandings of the Torah because Shaul the Shaliak was then receiving understandings of the prophetic shadows of the Torah, spoken of then in Hebrews 10. So he must be smart and understand where those prophets and the Shilishim they came from. There was not yet at the time the renewed covenant on paper. Shaliak Shaul was making absolutely 100% reference of the Torah and then he was making comparisons. He was transitioning the people from the first service to the second service. Thus, he had to compare then both of them so they would understand and properly do the transition. First service, second service, first service, second service, first service, second service. Because there was a completion of a half of it, known as the Spring Feast, and then came the anointing. This anointing, then the Hebraic people would be empowered from special understandings from heaven via functions. And what are the functions? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, miracles, healings, prophecy, word of knowledge was already spoken. Discerning of spirits and tongues interpretation of tongues. There is no teaching, neither faith. Those were made it up. Do you know why those were made it up? Because people they were not finding their giftings. But they were mostly involved with preaching, teaching the word without functioning. And they were speaking a great deal of faith, this, that, and the other. And they came up with a couple more gifts, because those most of the people would be related with, and those they don't exist. There is no gift of faith, neither of teaching. There are functions. So then we understand what it takes for a person then to understand the transitional time from the first service and the second service. It's precisely what then Shaul the Shaliak was explaining. Always transitional time. If you are transitioning from an area to another area, you have to compare them both. When a person is ready for moving, a person has to compare the situation, the existing place where the person is at, versus then what's coming in the future. You're always comparing. So Shaul was comparing the first service and the second service. But then there were so many liars at the time, they did not understand the Torah. They were not taught in the Hebraic understanding. They did not understand what it meant for every year, repeating the same feasts for a purpose. They were not included in the time and season of the time. They only got excited with the moment of this new presence and they began to come up with lies. That's why the Greco-Romans decided to scandalize the entire works. So 
So then these last days we understand there are many layers of those prophetic sections spoken of by the Holy Prophets. And we must understand how to read it. We must read it in Hebraic thought, Hebraic thinking. That's why Shaul the Shaliach said, Renew the mind with the Torah. Only the Torah was available during the time he spoke those words. Because he was receiving more understandings from heaven related with the prophetic shadows from the Torah. So how can people these days then try to renew their minds with the renewed covenant scoundrelized, twisted, lied to, and then they try to understand the prophecies? Defeats the purpose. A person never understands the prophecy. Because there are the steps of formation. So then when a person begins then understanding the Torah, a person must be able to explain the entire renewed covenant only from the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. Let's say if you then were given the proper copy of the word from the Hebraic thinking or maximum of Aramaic. It can't be any other copy. Absolutely not. And the best would be only Hebraic. Then you have in this codex you have the previous covenant and then the renewed covenant. If a person would tear away the renewed covenant from your codex and would give you back then only the previous covenant, you must be able then to teach the entire renewed covenant from the old or the previous. You must be able because then shows you you do have the understanding then of the shadow prophetic understandings of the Torah spoken of by Shaul in Hebrews 10. A true believer and then a person that does submit to the Messiah must then in mind understand remove the entire renewed covenant and then teach the entire renewed covenant from the previous covenant. When you are able to do this then you are able to understand Revelation. So what goes on these days because of the scandalized scripture twisted and manipulated from the Greco and the Romans people they make a reference only to the renewed. And they reject the previous covenant precisely had to do contrary. You don't make a reference of the word from the renewed covenant you make from the previous covenant. Because you have to have the foundation of the prophets first. That's why Shaul said, renew your mind with the word. He was speaking of the Torah. So when a person comes to you and tries to teach you prophecies without the proper understanding of the previous covenant, forget it. A person can be very nicely um, and intended to give those words, but does it have any foundation from the Torah? Then what do you understand of the Torah? And then a person can't answer it, then you can hear it, but then place it on a shelf. That's why Shaul the Shaliach said what he said. Renewing the mind with the word. He was speaking those words because he was delegating responsibility to his own people. Because the spring feast was completed. And Ruach HaKodesh was active amongst his people. And then there were Gentiles mixed with them. So then you have a Hebraic husband for instance. And then a non-believing wife. Sometimes they had a believing wife and then a non-believing husband. 
Shaul could not separate them. That's why he said, renew your mind then. You, the people, they are then pagans and were pagans before and Gentiles must renew your mind. You must learn how to think. You must learn how to read the scripture. And at the time there was only the Torah. Because we are experiencing this very moment the renewal. We are in the 61st chapter of Yerushiahu. The renewal. He's speaking of the city, then the cities, and he included the Gentiles. Mostly because the second services of the Holy Tabernacles would include the Gentiles. That was the Holy Purpose. The Gentiles being grafted in a vine. So he decided to include the entire Gentile people, even their own countries, in this renewal time. But then we understand, as from the time of old, as you read the prophecies and then the kings of old, of the pagan nations, there was, during every time you read the scripture in terms of the prophecies, you would find a secular leader of the world at the time. During the time of Daniel was the Babylonian king. During the time of Joseph was then the Pharaoh. There were particular nations in charge of the secular world while then the prophecies were taking place. During the time of the king of Babylon was then the 70 years captivity. And some people, oh, they did this because they had evil. No, because they simply did not maintain the yearly Shabbat. In the scripture you find in the law, after a certain number of years you should then have the yearly Shabbat. 490 years they had the land, they never had the land rest. And those were then year after year after year after year, and then after a set of years, the land did not rest. It came a time where there was so much evil in the land, the land had rest. Thus then the people went to captivity for 70 years. And then we Gentiles must understand those areas because the most important for us is understanding the shadow understandings of the Torah. While then the refurbishment of the cities, those are exclusive for then the Hebraic people. Because there is a second anointing then coming, so then they would teach the word with much more anointing as never before. So it's not time of playing games. This is real truth. So then when we read from Leviticus, then we begin to understand what it meant. You find in the nation of Israel, they were brought up out of Egypt with the mighty signs and wonders through the hands of Moses and his brother Haron. Most of the talking was done then by Haron during the time they went to Egypt and then later miracles began to come out of the hand of Moses. And then they came out of Egypt through the Red Sea. They were parked near the mountain. Then Moshe went up there and then he had a talk with Yahweh. He came down with the holy laws and they established the first service. So then they trained for a while in the desert. Then the promised land was then given them. They only transferred the tabernacle from the desert onto the promised land and they trained for more than a thousand years. Can you imagine you train for more than a thousand years the same type of feast? Boy, after a while the nation would be absolutely understanding what it means. 
So then the Mashiach came and he brought the first anointing for the second service. Then became the transitional time. Then Yohanan, when he was then on the mainland, he was then in the first perfect copy of the city. Giving directives to the Gentiles. And then we are living during the time where then precisely these cities are returning. Because the seat from 1009 until 2009, that's gone. And whatsoever the world's perception of heaven was, simply erase it. The whole situation, the whole bundle of understanding, throw it out. It was an absolutely junky, put together, scoundrelized, putrefied, twisted junk. There is no Holy Spirit living in people. Where did they get this crazy idea from? That's from the time of the deceit. The Spirit of Yahweh remains in the Holy of Holies. Where did you find the Spirit of Yahweh during the time of the first service? Didn't you find Him in the Holy of Holies? What did the Messiah say to His people? The 23rd chapter of Metichiahu. Whatsoever Moses told you to do and observe, these do and observe. Did he not? He was speaking of the Torah. The Messiah was a prophet. He was the most important prophet that ever lived in the face of the earth. Doing precisely what his previous prophets did, pointing the people back to the instructions. That's why he said, whatsoever Moses told you to do and observe, these do and observe. Because he knew they had to set up tabernacle then in the future, and then they would be transitioning from the first to the second service. That's why you have Hebrews in a word. Hebrews meant for the Hebrews. Isn't that profound? Simple logic, but it's very profound. Some very many non-Hebrews, they read Hebrews and they think it's for them. No. Hebrews was then recorded for the Hebrews. Because then you understand the Levitical priests were then Hebrews and they would be in charge of the second tabernacle services. Until when the time was going to be right for then the rebuilding of the temple. So whatsoever you have learned from a pagan viewpoint, pagan scandalized scripture, simply throw it away. The notion of a savior exists. The notion of a creator exists. The notion of a spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, does exist. The notion of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, those do exist. But you were taught from a pagan viewpoint comes the task of then renewing your mind from the instructions so then you can understand the renewed covenant. It's a brand new viewpoint of an old teaching. For many people at least. And then a person must be used to these words in Hebrew, becoming familiar with those words, becoming familiar with the stories of the previous and then the future. They must relate to how to then, in quote, navigate from the first to the second and vice versa. So then you begin to teach your mind the multi-layers of the first and the second, the second and the first, the first and the second, and vice versa, back and forth. Then when you begin to read the revelation, then you find yourself then having references of the prophets and you understand where it stands at. 
then after a while you find yourself then in the spirit reading of the spirit and then when you read those time no longer counts he places you in a plateau a person might say where you begin to think heavenly however understanding the timeline down the earth And it takes time. It takes a person of showing the word, understanding the word, showing the words in Hebrew, explain the meaning, not character by character and try to word them together. Only what they mean as a word and then the other word and then the other word and then making a sentence equivalent in another language. There's no relation with the significance of numbers and then you place this number, this number becomes the other number. No, that, that's not a part of it. A simple understanding of what those mean in the Hebraic thought. Because there is a relation with layers and then prophecies. It takes time. A person must hear this every day. As if a person would go to work in the morning and then come back at night to turn on the radio and then would get the copy of the scripture from Hebrew or Aramaic and then underline the section of it and then prior to going to bed rereading, rereading, rereading until they are filtered. This is what it takes, is a daily understanding of it. And it must be every day. That's why the Hebraic people, when they were very hard workers, they would spend the time during the day working, working, working. They would cluster at night and they would read. That's why you find yet the Hebraic people, every Shabbat they come together and they read, and they read, and they read. There are some areas where they got stuck in the first service. So they are also updating the understandings because they were granted with a second service and there is a renewal going on. So both sides, Gentiles and Hebraic people, they are working together to get their act straight. But most importantly, speaking of the Gentiles, because the number of us is far more than the Hebraic, then we must do double work. Not only must we filter ourselves of junk, then it has to be replaced with the truth. And every day, every day, every day, meaning every day, if a friend does not have a radio, then go invite him. Every day he starts the radio program, you invite your friend, Get a pencil, a piece of paper, and then begin to write. It is amazing. Every time you begin to think in a Hebraic thought, you begin to read those holy words, it filters and gives you peace, gives you stability. Somebody must do the talk, somebody must be on the radio continuously. Continuously. Continuously and continuously. Some of these people must be on the radio 24-7 for year after year. Teaching every day. It's a type of a situation that there is no rest on the Shabbat. But it's a teaching in itself, so it's positive. It's not a work. So the Gentiles can maintain their paces because a lot of the saved Hebraic people, they are far ahead of us. And we are far behind. We were deterred by scoundrelized junkie scripture and we got lost. 
You have a lot of catch up to do. It should be enough to have this as a radio program only. It does not require having television. Images sometimes when a person is speaking is the worst thing ever. Person having a nice radio at home it's more than enough. Because when a person speaks spacely, slowly, a person can get the understanding. It does not require any kind of an image. What did he always say? Thou shalt not bow down to any image. So when a person is learning properly, there is a normal factor of human beings to relate the image as the image. And when a person has a strong understanding of the Torah, he ended up then bowing down to the image rather than listening to the information. And they begin to compare each other. Oh, because this preacher then did this, that, and the other, and that's why God favored them. It has nothing to do with it. Are they learning the Torah? No, they are learning junky from the renewed covenant. So throw it away, it's junk. They can't explain then the renewed covenant from the first, from the original covenant. What is the use of it? It's junk. So then, when Yahweh then sends his prophets, his people, those of old, they did teach them properly. They point out the problem, they identify the problem, they show them the scriptures, they read them in public. And they pointed them back to the instructions. Never changes. And then Shaul the Shaliah gave us the warning. Be aware of that at the end many would come in his name. The name of the Messiah. Teaching the people doctrines of demons. Try to understand. What does it mean? They speak of a Messiah outside of the holy understanding of the tabernacle. That's why then a Messiah going to and fro in the earth doesn't exist. It was concocted. So then when you begin to understand from the first covenant, where was then Yahweh found? In the Holy of Holies. Where do you think then Yahweh when he came would be found later in the multiple tabernacles? In the Holy of Holies. Why are you believing then a Messiah outside of the Holy Tabernacle for? So then you read then 2 Corinthians 11, 4, you understand. If any person comes to you and proclaims to you another Messiah, another gospel, another spirit, then be sure that you have the false Messiah. And he gave us the warning prior of the situation because he was observing some of his own people mixed with the Gentiles trying to find out this crazy Messiah outside of the Holy Tabernacle. And he said, it's insanity. These people must be aware of it in the near future. They are going to believe this is stupid Messiah. It never worked. There are principles and people must be taught. Thus comes the discipline of your mind. As the prophets would come during the time of old, during the time of Israel, when they were then drifting away from the Holy Torah, came in the prophets. And some of them were hated. Boy, Eliyahu then was hated beyond measure. The king of Israel at some point, he said, you Eliyahu, the trouble of Israel. And he said, myself not trouble of Israel, you have departed from the Holy Laws. So 
So Eliyahu was feared. Because what was going on in the land of Israel was nonsense. And they began then to turn to evil. And every time Eliyahu would show up, boy, they were afraid of him. Because his function was to point these people back to the instructions. Scoundrel king. So then sometimes you are going to learn new truth that you are not going to like it, but then you have to point yourself back to the instructions. If you then don't force yourself to be instructed by the instructions, then you are a scoundrel. Precisely what the king of Israel was. We have to force ourselves back to the instructions. But then as in a level of Gentiles, we understand the shadow prophetic understandings because we are on another level. So then those areas easily found in, in the Torah, then we read then the prophets. Every time you hear a prophet speaking, you find special instructions from the instructions. So then these crazy denominations and crazy churches and crazy viewpoints, it's junk. Each and every of them junk. If you compare those with a raw understanding of the scripture from the Torah, those are junk. However, there is a notion of Savior, a notion of the Divine, a notion of a Creator, a notion of Prophets, but those must fit in a proper understanding spoken of by Shaul the Shaliak in renewing your mind with the Torah. If you have those notions without renewing your mind with the Torah, then it's a bad notion. And then we continue doing our services as we do. We work as normal people. We pay our taxes. We are responsible for the government. The government do its share. Start up programs. Take care of their people. Take care of the infrastructure. Take care of the roads. That's why they are there. If they don't do this, there is no reason for them to be there. Either they do what they must do, or they get rid of them. And since Yahweh is a Yahweh true creator, he wants understanding and organization, then we organize. There are many countries around the world, such as some of them in Africa, they don't pay their dues to the government. The governments are in shambles. They have no authority. They don't understand. Companies coming in, removing the resources, natural resources, they make their trade, they don't pay taxes, they don't not even file in. Either you are a government or you are not a government. If you believe there is a creator and he is then organized, then you should be organized. Companies must pay their share. And the price of minerals and materials must be then a price that people can live from. And there are companies making thousand percent above what they buy for. They are damn scoundrels. They must pay a proper price so those people can make a living out of. And then the money returned to the country from where the resources came from. Because those places, some of those places in Africa, those are awful. They have no sanitary system, no duct system. They urinate on a road while they are walking. Disgusting. 
no electricity, no water sometimes. And these other companies making a fortune. They don't give a crap. So then the companies related in their country, in African soil, they must give their share properly. And then the president set up with his cabinet. He wants this much for this kind of mineral. Companies involved with them, they pay this much. Or then they don't do any trade. And he must be firm. And then hire people to do properly teaching regarding heaven because the proper teaching of heaven teaches how to organize a country.